Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the uh, Monday night live stream. Uh, I wanted to uh, thank one person real quick here. Had my first ever bulk membership. Someone bought six months before the stream, and that uh, someone wants to remain anonymous. So thank you, anonymous, for the six month membership. Tonight we're going to talk about breeding fish not for profit although there's definitely a profit to be made uh we're going to talk about just to help supplement your income in regards to paying for this hobby because eventually you all are if you're not addicted yet you're going to get addicted if you only have one tank it's just a matter of time before you have three tanks so also, if you guys can hear the fan or the AC, any of that in the background, please let me know because it's hot and trying to make it somewhat bearable for this two hour live stream. Uh, all good, but a little bit in the background, nothing big. All right, I'll take that. Should be good then. Um, and also, thank you to Aquarium Co-op. I'm assuming that everyone is saying cake because of Aquarium Co-op. I don't know what that's in reference to. Um, I don't really eat cake but the only thing I can think of is Katie wanted to get me cake for my birthday and I said no I'd rather have like beef jerky or something and we settled on uh, something else that I still haven't got that's the only thing I can think of uh, refusing Dorkula's cake yes no I'd rather have steak or jerky or anything like that anything but sugar and sweets and yeah uh, joke went over your head. So yeah, three tanks. It ends there. It never ends with three tanks. So anyways, keep your questions or save your questions till later because I don't really see a lot of chat right now, but I will. So save your questions for later. I want to talk about, let me uh, close this out real quick, but we're going to talk about what to breed, um, how much of it to breed and a lot of that depends on where you are. So the first tip I'm going to give you is know your market. Um, for instance, where I'm at here in Seattle, I've talked about this before. If you came to Seattle and you're like, I'm going to breed a thousand African cichlids every week, you're going to go broke. If you came to Seattle and said, I'm going to breed a thousand guppies and endlers and shrimp every week, you're going to be a millionaire. So know your market. Well, how do you know your market? You go to your local fish stores, you talk to them, open up that communication because you're going to need them anyways. Um, ask, ask them what fish they sell the most. Any good store should be able to tell you right off the bat what are the most common fish that they sell. And it's probably going to be like neon tetras or something like that. But get down to where there's fish that you actually want to breed like the guppies, endlers, shrimp. I mean, shrimp are always a money maker regardless. So get shrimp. There, there's, there's the first real advice. Get shrimp. They're so easy to ship. I mean, there's, you can't go wrong with, with, uh, with shrimp. The other thing you got to decide is if you're going to ship or not. Um, you know, you can go to websites like get gills or Aquabid and ship, which would make things, I wouldn't say easier, but it does open you up to more possibilities. And then the other thing I want to talk about is you don't really need a lot of tanks to breed. Um, you can, you know, people that are stuck on like one or two tanks, not everyone's going to be, uh, you know, Dean or anyone with like a hundred fish tanks, just breeding fish like crazy. Uh, it's really easy to do everything in one tank. For instance, like, you know, I go back to my breeding fish for profit tank, which was a 55 gallon. Uh, we had guppies in there, shrimp and plecos all breeding in there, but that tank was set up specifically for that. What if you have like one tank and it's your only tank, it's your show tank. You know, it's your centerpiece tank, but you got guppies and you want to breed guppies. Um, this right here, which I talked about in my last video, and I, want, and I do actually use these. So this is the absolute best thing. And I have duckweed falling out of this thing right now. Uh, this is the this is probably the easiest thing you can do for like no maintenance. Um, doesn't require any extra equipment. It's just got a suction cup. It floats. You can adjust the level. Um, and we talked about this in the video or like I have actually just scooped up bristlenose eggs, bristlenose pleco eggs and put them just right in here. I'll should move this back a little. There we go. And they'll just, they'll just hatch out in here. If you get guppy fry, you can scoop them out and put them in here. 
Uh, the other option is these hang on breeder boxes. These are very useful for a lot of reasons, but especially breeding. Um, but it does require extra equipment. Like you need an air pump to uh, siphon the water up into it. And then it comes out the other end and overflows. Um, you know, you, this is actually really good for like sick fish and quarantining and things like that. Uh, I realize you're sharing water, but it allows you to separate. Like if you have fish that are getting picked on and they need to be quarantined so they can grow their fins back, things like that. But also for breeding. And then what I usually do with these is for the overflow here, they have this. I usually don't use this because sometimes what happens, like you can see in this one here, I haven't cleaned it since I last used it, but they can get kind of mucked up and then your water level rises and then all your fry can just whoop, go right over there. So I usually take this out and I usually just put batting right here and I find that that works a lot better for me. But yeah, so there's a few things you can get there. Uh, what else? So see if we have any quick questions here he's going the distance he's going for speed he's all alone <laughs> um part of my workout okay so as far as what type to as far as what kind of fish you can breed if you're on the east coast african cichlids are going to be easy um a lot of a lot of fish that i think people don't realize and one that i made a lot of money on and i mean a lot of money was a pistogrammas I mean, you can get something like I got to wipe all this duckweed that's on, on my desk now. Get it out of the way. Uh, but Epistogrammas are an excellent fish to breed to make a little bit of extra money. I mean, they have huge spawns. Some of them you can get like 30 to 50 babies a spawn. I mean, I've gotten uh, like the McMaster Eye. I've gotten huge spawns out of them. There's, I think there's only one video if you go back like five years on my YouTube channel. Uh, but you're going to get it, but I, I don't think I ever got less than 30 babies. And when you're selling to the public, after you grow those out, first of all, they grow really fast, which is nice. Uh, I mean, you can get like 10 to $15 each for those things and 30 a pop. That's pretty crazy. So I think a um, there's some that are easy mode, like the cockatoides, uh, the McMaster Eye, a lot of them that have bred, been bred uh, by hobbyists already in our water. Um, and then there's there's definitely some rare species species that are going to require you to play with the pH and things like that. Uh, but like a good quality orange flash or triple red epistogram of cockatoides, I mean, you can sell those all day long at $10 a piece easy. Um, if you're going to a store, I really wouldn't expect more than like $5 on trade-in credit for something like that. But again, it depends on your market and where you're at. Um, and then obviously like bristlenose plecos and guppies and, and shrimp can't say that enough. Um, John rocks says I have almost 200 Dalmatian Molly fry. When will they be ready to sell? All right. So that's another thing you need to consider. So what does it take if you're setting up a tank specifically breeding for profit? Like my 55 gallon. Uh, I mean, you said you had 200 fry and in, in addition, you know, you have your adults, you have coral red platies. I don't know if they're in the same tank, but if you have all that going on in the same tank, you really got to watch maintenance because it's very easy to crash your tank when you have that many fish. So when I had plecos, guppies and shrimp all in one tank, uh, that was three water changes every single week. And at some points, if I went like three to four weeks without trading in and taking in fish to my local fish store, I was doing water changes every other day and I'm not talking like uh, 10, 15%. I'm talking like 50% water changes every other day. And, um, it gets crazy. So that's definitely something you need, need to take into, into consideration as well is how much maintenance do you want to do? Um, but again, if you're just the person with one tank, you got some guppies, throw them in here, raise them up for, you know, four weeks and then go ditch them to your local fish store, get some store credit or sell them local Facebook groups, even though you're not allowed to sell on Facebook anymore. Uh, Craigslist, things like that. Uh, really good resources. Joel says, what are the wholesale pricing for bristlenose plecos? I have about 200 BN fry. So, uh, I mean, I don't know that I can really like give away that kind of info. It's, I mean, it's pretty common knowledge, but I would say, in general, like if you take a look 
at let's say your local fish store has like two inch bristlenose plecos and they're selling them for eight bucks i would expect to get around two dollars for those to be honest um and maybe not even that much maybe you'll get three dollars again it depends um as you you know establish your relationship you can probably get more money down the road uh once they figure out hey this guy's got pretty good stuff you know we should pay him for it so uh, i've had yeah it, it really depends so the wholesale prices also are just crazy different from the different wholesalers um like there's some wholesalers that buy them from a farm in florida that imported them from someplace overseas and so those are really expensive and then there are some places that just you know buying them massive bulk from local breeders so they might be selling them for like five or six dollars and maybe paying a dollar or two for them so it really depends but i would say at most like if they offer you below like 25 percent what they're selling for i would be insulted i would never expect anything over like a third I've never gotten anything more than like a third. So if they're selling a fish for $10, I'm probably gonna, they're probably gonna pay me $3. So again, it's just a way to, to supplement, um, unless you're doing like full mass, mass scale fish farm stuff, um, you're probably not gonna be able to make a living breeding fish. Um, there's a reason like, like not a lot of people do it. <laughs> Uh, and I want to welcome Holly Partridge Downing to the Dream Team. Thank you. Thank you. We finally got the name changed. Join the Steen Dream Team. That is right. The fifth dentist cave. And now they're all recommending my membership. Uh, better breeding work must be separate. Need to have good line fish. Yeah, I'm not even getting into bettas. I've never done bettas. I'm not a better expert. Um, can't really speak. I mean, I've kept lots of bettas, but I've never tried to breed them. So I can't really, you know, can't really speak on that as far as, is it profitable? Do you make any money? Um, is it just something to supplement your income? Uh, there's a big difference from using, using fry to supplement your income versus saying you're doing it for profit. Like that's two very different statements to make. And for, I mean, for very different reasons, right? I mean, if you're doing it for profit, that means you gotta, you know, how much energy are you spending or how much money are you spending on power, water, food? When it's just to supplement it, you, who cares? You know, if I can take in a bag of fish and get $30 of credit, that's pretty awesome. That pays for my fish food. <sighs> All right, quick break. Uh, Luke says, stocking ideas for a 35 gallon planted, you know I'm gonna say rainbow fish. Um, you know, really it's one of the hardest questions and actually that's, I mean, I'm, I'm not coming down on you and all coming down on you, but as like YouTubers, that's the most common question we get and you're always going to get like our favorite fish, right? Uh, it's nothing that's, I mean, you may hate rainbow fish and here I am saying, oh, you should get rainbow fish. So you got to go, go to somewhere like, you know, YouTube you know, look at like top five, whatever, you're, whatever, like, let's say, I don't know. Do you say a 35 gallon? Look, look up like top five fish for a 29 gallon and watch those videos. Go to like seriouslyfish.com. It has like a huge catalog of fish to choose from. Uh, those that's, that's what I would do. I wouldn't, uh, you know, like if I go ask Corey, he's going to say like guppies or I don't know, platies or I don't know. But I'm gonna. But I'm not gonna want guppies, and I'm not gonna want platies. So, <sighs> are Santa Claus guppies profitable? Bought a pair, have 14 fry first round. So, you got to do the homework. You know that's definitely something you should do. Guppies in general always do well, especially if you're gonna ship. If you're gonna ship, by all means, breed the crap out of guppies. They're super easy. They're durable fish. Um, you know, you, you can just toss them in a breather bag and if they get stuck in the mail for a week, it's usually not a big deal. Um, when you start getting into specific strains though, that's where you're going to want to sell online. In my experience, local fish stores, um, at least like around, I mean, I only had one, so that's my experience, but I did it for years, right? I sold fish to him for years. Uh, for him, like mutt guppies sold way better than like specific strains because 
you got like the average Petco or PetSmart person going into a local fish store and seeing guppies for thirty dollars, and they're like, "It's red. Petco has red red guppies for a dollar." Like, so the uh, the mutt stuff always sells well uh, to lo- in local fish stores, in my experience. Now, there's definitely places like you know higher end shops or specialty shops like that. That's 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 different. But your 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 regular like ma and pa shop versus like a Petco customer, they're not going to know the difference. Uh, Joel says, mutt guppiers are hardier than pure strains and throw amazing colors. Yes. So that's what I'm actually doing in my, I set up my breeding fish for profit tank again. It's a 55 gallon. Um, I wanted to do long fin green dragon plecos, but it's almost impossible to get all the plecos out of there. Like it would take a full tank teardown to get all just the regular uh, chocolate plecos out of there. So still going to just keep the regular plecos in there, but I'm doing mutt guppies. Whereas before when I started, I did red Delta and then I threw in some sunrise and I let those kind of mix and match. And we've got some cool stuff, but now since I've been ordering like guppies for the website, things like that, I've got like one, one offs of all different kinds of color strains, um, all different types as far as like finish types. Um, just all kinds of crazy stuff thrown in there. So I think we're going to get some really cool stuff. And there are some fry. They're really small. No color yet. But it's going to be interesting to see uh, what they grow up to be. Zen Ginger says, Bob, I'm the owner. Thank you. I have no idea what that means. Uh, thank you, Fish Room Fever, for the $1 super chat. Grumpy Mike's for the $1 super chat. Mr. Ed's Aquatic says, where do you get the breeder boxes that hang off the front? So you're talking about these. Uh, they're pretty hard to get right now. I got them on Amazon. I wish that um, you know Aquarium Co-op would design their own because there are some things I would like changed on this. But uh, right now, the only place I can find them is on Amazon, um, and they're sold out all the time lately. So they were in stock briefly like two weeks ago. So I bought uh, a couple of them. Um, but yeah, Aquarium Co-op, if you want something new to design, I'd get on something like this because there's some improvements that can be made. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Amazon on those. These guys right here, though, uh, these you can get from Aquarium Co-op. Um, and like I said, these things are just amazing. And now I'm like dropping duckweed in my drink. So that wasn't very awesome. Lots of them made in Canada. Make a trade. Keep harping Corey to design one. Squeaky wheel. Yep. Yep. I mean, this is... There's really nothing wrong with this, but there are some things I would like to see changed just to make it a little easier. But we can talk about that later. This fry box is on the way next. Well, I can't wait to try that out. Sorry, Bob. Other Bob. Oh, okay. <laughs> You mean Bob Kaler. All right. Uh, if you ever want a pair of Santa Claus guppies, I'll s- gladly send you a pair. I've actually, I don't know that I've ever seen those. I'm going to look them up right now. I mean, Santa Claus. You can't go wrong with Santa Claus. That's a pretty cool dude. Uh, let's see. Santa Claus guppy. Uh, red, blue, and white. Is that right? Or just red and white? This is a problem with Google, like a hundred different guppies come up and they're all different colors. Uh, I had that channel, the other bottom, no one liked it. Hang on the back breeder box with the pump from Phoenix is my favorite. The hang on breeder box. Um, Thunder Aquatics, I've used that one once. Uh, I just feel like for what it is, it's pretty expensive. But, yep. Pure steak juice imported from Fiji. That is right. That's what this is. Steak juice imported from Fiji. I like it. I like it. Uh, what else do we got going on? I'm just trying to catch up on chat. I grabbed a bunch of those breeder boxes last year when they were like $8, but they're all sold out now. Yeah, they were uh, They were a little bit cheaper, but they still only let you buy three. Um, and actually, the weird thing is, is on Amazon... It says Marina Hang On a Breeder Box. They actually showed up today as Fluval branded breeder boxes. 
So I don't know if Fluval bought Marina. Apparently they did, but I don't know. A fish tank barn with a $1.49 pie. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. I feel like there might have been another one from you that I missed, but maybe not. Um, I do want to I do want to real quickly also make my membership spiel. Uh, this week's video, just to let you guys know, is going to be we got a, some blooper reels, some bloopers coming in from the the last weekend of filming with Dean and Corey. So that should be pretty fun. Uh, Corey says Marina and Fluval are the same company. They brand things Fluval when they don't want to discount them. I had no idea. So RM Aquatics, what about cribs for profit? So cribs are something that are really hit or miss. Um, I think last week somebody said that they can't they can't breed enough of them for their local fish store, which is amazing to me because when I went to my local fish store, the tank was always full of cribs and there was always people wanting to drop off more. And there was so many that he wouldn't even pay for them. He's like, if you want to drop them off for free, that's fine. I'm not giving any in-store credit, though. Uh, there's just too many of them. So I think it, that's that's a fish that you're going to have to go to your local fish store and say, um, you know, do you guys sell these? Would you be interested? Know that cribs are one of the cheapest fish wholesale, so you're not going to get a lot. Um, Greg Jean, welcome to the Steen Dream Team. Thank you, my friend. Uh, the first super chat was cake and now pie. Did I miss it? I might have missed it. It was right at the beginning. Sorry, buddy. What is a good beginner rainbow fish to breed? So, I don't think that any rainbow fish is going to be a beginner breeding fish. Um, like, beginner fish would be, again, I mean, I've I said guppies like a million times, but let's be real. Um, you know, rice fish white clouds guppies bristle nose plecos uh cribs uh convicts uh, all those things are like those are like the easy things rainbow fish um they can get a little more dicey um they're a little bit more finicky especially the fry when it comes to water quality and specifically with the eggs uh, rainbow fish eggs can fungus really easily so i don't know how should I say this? So all rainbow fish pretty much breed the same. I wouldn't say that there's one rainbow fish that's harder to breed than the other. They 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 all just plant their eggs on you know spawning mops or or floating plants. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't I don't really think that there's one. There's definitely some that are harder um, if you start getting into like the brackish species, but honestly. The easiest way, I think, is to just throw them in a tub, throw them in a tank, fill it, just gobs of plants, um, spawning mops, and just water changes, and lots and lots of food. And then, you know, it, it, it also depends on what, you know, what kind of hatch rate are you trying to get? Are you trying to be like the Gary Lang that gets like 100% of the eggs to hatch? Or are you just the average hobbyist that wants to do it for fun? and try to breed some rainbow fish and you only get like 20% hatch rate. So if, if you're the hobbyist that's just trying to do it for fun, that's what I would do. I would set up a tank, fill it with spawning mops and um, water changes, lots of live, uh, live foods, frozen foods, um, just really high quality. If you don't want to do live or frozen, I'm starting to get on the extreme kick. I've been talking about it for a couple weeks and I got some finally about a week ago and the fish go crazy for it. So we'll see if it's good enough to get fish to spawn. I don't know that yet, but uh, live black worms, frozen blood worms definitely work for rainbow fish. Uh, and Katie brings up a good point for rainbow fish. It's really easy, and it's not just rainbow fish, but rainbow fish uh, generally, corridors are the same way. After water change, they really get freaky after water change. So um, feed them. So what I would do, so I used, I've bred Parkinson and I, and I've had accidental breedings, but when I specifically try to breed them, um, I feed a ton and then I do like a huge water change the next day, maybe two days later, but generally I'll do like, you know, Monday I'll just drop in a ton of food and then Tuesday I'll do like a 50% water change. Uh, but if you have like 
most of my rainbow fish are already fat and, and healthy to begin with. So if you have some skinny ones, maybe feed them a ton a couple times, then do the water change, fatten them up a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's how I do it. And BM3 Aquatic says I love extreme nano food. It tastes interesting. I will say it tastes interesting. Um, what kind of rainbows for a 35 gallon? So I'm not too uh, familiar, Luke, with 35 gallon. I don't know, is that a, is that a tall tank? Is it long? Um, I'm not sure on the on the dimensions of that. What kind of mop should I use? I'm, paramo I'm paranoid. There's factory residue on some of the mops I've found. So I, I use acrylic yarn and I've never had an issue. And I might have some here. Um, I don't see any on my desk. If you want me to grab it, I can go grab some. It's just out on my table. But it's just like cheap acrylic yarn from... Uh, where did I get it from? I think I just bought it on Amazon, to be honest. I don't remember. Uh, Mr. Fuzz says, tips on breeding Corys for profit. So, Corys, like I said, almost exactly like rainbow fish. Um, they stick, they generally like to stick their eggs to the glass. So, <sighs> here's, here's the easiest way to breed Corydoras. You get them all in a tank. Get like Depending on, say, say, let's just say hypothetically you got a 40-gallon breeder. And maybe you got 20 Corydoras in there, right? I would probably put like a quarter, I'm not even joking, like a quarter pound of blackworms in there and let them go nuts and then do like big 50% water changes like every other day. And they will spawn like crazy and they, you can get them to spawn for like a week at a time weeks at a time uh trey with the five dollar super chat i hit like and subscribe and all my shrimp are buried i'm gonna assume buried <laughs> snickers and reese's for corridors yeah yeah um i like the way you mark it i'll have to try that um so yeah corridors are actually surprisingly easy um and again what was I watching? I was watching a video, I think from 2017 of when I, I think it might've been my very first tour video of Corey's fish room where he was breeding uh, orange laser Corey's. And he was doing it exactly like I said earlier, earlier with rainbow fish. He just filled it with spawning mops, of course, weighted down because Corey's don't want them floating. Um, but you can, you can pretty much make a spawning mop that doesn't float that sinks and just fill the tank with spawning mops throw in a bunch of corridoras and you can colony breed them that way you're not going to get the same results that if you you know like pick each egg off the glass and separate it um but if you just create like an enormous hide for them for the fry to hide in uh they'll they'll lay their eggs in there they'll they'll hatch in there and you know they'll hide they won't get bothered by bigger corridoras they don't they won't get stressed out um, and that's that's a really good way to colony spawn Corydoras. I've actually been shooting a video about that, so you'll see that. And also doing another tour of Corey's fish room. Uh, the first one I think I've done in years, to be honest. So that's the next video. Just give you a little sneak peek. <laughs> Uh, Seeple133, welcome to the Steen Dream Team. I am working on a pretty sweet graphic that will pop up every time somebody joins the channel. So it's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, I have black opal shabunkins in my outdoor tub. They're breeding like hamsters. I've been lucky a few times and pulled out spawning mops in time. Goldfish can be another good one. They can definitely be another good one. I have to raise the ceiling to have Bob film in the fish room. Yeah, it did take a couple years to get that done. Are there any plants that is easy to grow in low tech 75 with medium light? There's a ton of plants. Um, I would just fill that thing with crypts. As a matter of fact, um, I have the exact same tank you're thinking of. I don't know how far back you have to go on my channel, maybe like three years, but I did a crypt, uh, just a gigantic crypt garden in a 75 gallon. It only had one like stingray light, I believe. It might not have been stingray, but it was like the really thin, uh, maybe like Odyssey or Aquanee. Uh, it only had 
like two strips of LEDs and that was it. And just a gigantic crypt garden. There was a Nubius in there. Uh, what else? That might have been it. I tried flame moss, but it died. Um, I think I tried some other mosses. I can never get mosses to grow because it was like, I mean, it was like no light in there. Uh, but the crypts did really well. Uh, I grew that massive, some people might remember I had that massive piece of Anubius that I threw in my pond. Uh, that came out of that low light 75 gallon tank and then I threw it in my pond and it killed it, fried it. Within, within like weeks it was dead. So that, that was pretty disappointing. That was like, that's probably like $200 worth of Anubius. I mean the piece was like, I, I mean I can't even tell you, it was like, yeah, it's big, it was huge. But I was like, hey, I'm going to go put it in my pond, that seems like a good idea. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Oh, man. Optic says, this does not sound like a good idea for me. I am think I'm going to get, oh, one convict cichlid. Okay. Okay. I guess I had to read, I had to read the sentence first. I, was, <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was going to be, I think I'm going to get convict cichlids, but one. All right. What would be the best environment for it? So convict cichlids, the nice thing about convict cichlids is they've been bred in the aquarium hobby for so long. They can go in just about any type of water parameter like any type they're super durable super hardy but just don't put them with fish that can fit in their mouth um don't put them with if you have a convict cichlid that's like five inches i don't know that i would keep it with anything that was under three inches unless you have like maybe some super fast danios uh but they're a fish that can go just like completely normal and then like just one day it just like something snaps and it just kills everything so just keep that in mind um but as far as perfect parameter you know um just aquascape it rocks wood you know make it look good um why can't i see this name for some reason susan for slc aquatics like i cannot see your name in the green <laughs> But welcome. Welcome back. You're the lizard. You used to be one of my first members. Thank you. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Um, and uh, considering, considering, that's all, that's, you know, I don't want to get too much into it, but considering what you're going through, I hope you're doing well. And thank you for joining the dream team. The dream team. Uh, and Deb Hall says, fist bump, don't forget to hit the like button, guys. Hit the like button. Little colorblind Bob, it's blue. Yeah, I see it's blue, but it shows up. Um, it doesn't show up blue on my monitor. I had to uh, actually switch switch over, but that's all right. Mods, way to troll Bob. Become a member and watch him struggle to be able to read the blue name in the green background. Yeah, it's because of the green screen. It kind of like cancels it all out. So what, what can I say? What can I say? I do wish that there was a different color for mods that were members. You're like the, the double whammy. Like, I don't think it should just be blue, but I don't know. I wish it, I wish, actually, I wish I could customize people's, um, cause you know, this gray, that's boring. Like you, you guys are subscribed. You're awesome. You shouldn't just be a boring gray. You guys should have a color too, but you know what? That's just me. Um, how's it going for dollar super chat? Thank you, man. I'm going to butcher this name, but not on purpose. Cpel, maybe? Can I just call you, uh, you know, 13-3? One, th one, one, three, three. Uh, thank you. It is going amazing. Amazing. Um, yeah. Axolotls un Unlimited. The Gray Gang. Yeah, and like I said, like I said, without the Gray Gang, Gray Gang, there would be no green and there would be no blue. So... It's really the greys that run the show. <laughs> the aliens. Anyways. Luke5206, just subscribe. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Where can I buy the large driftwood that is in the tank behind you? I've looked around locally with no luck. Rob, so this is not just one piece. This is several small pieces put together. And that's pretty much what you got to do. Um, this, is, this is the trick here. Is you can see, like, like this is a piece... This, ooh, this is a piece, this is a piece, and then you just plant it. It's the plants that make this all look like one big piece. The plants create the illusion. The illusion. Rose Hill, hi from Australia. Any tips for breeding glassfish? I think I saw you ask this in Corey's stream. 
and I hate that you just wasted five dollars because I have never even researched uh, breeding glass glass fish like ever um, have I ever kept I don't even think I've ever kept glass fish let alone breeding um, I mean breeding glass fish hmm I don't really know that I would trust any of these fish lore that might be a good one um, I'm just curious what it says uh, to induce spawning they need slightly brackish water conditions with elevated temperatures they may place eggs on plant leaves raising the fry is another story altogether considered difficult it looks like you're in for a hard time it looks like it's one of those fish that transitions from fresh to brackish I could be wrong but the thing with glass fish is that I've never had success keeping them or I've never heard of anyone having success success keeping them long term in just fresh water so I've always stayed away from them um, I think my local fish store somewhere I was at a fish store and the owner was talking about them uh, and how like the farms keep them like not even not brackish but they throw just a lot of salt in their tanks and when they get shipped out they go to tanks with no salt and they always die um, so yeah I've always stayed away from glass glass fish I'm kind of I'm kind of scared so I wish I had a better answer for you but nope uh, most glass glass I don't even know why I can't say this I drink a water maybe maybe some of my steak juice uh. Knight Rider says most glass I still can't say it glass fish in the hobby are not brackish they are freshwater I don't know why that's so difficult for me Von Lurker says hello Bob have you ever kept bitterlings have any teps on their care another fish I haven't kept um, they're they are on my radar but I've never I've never kept them I agree I'm a chicken on glass fish glass fish I feel like I might swear if I keep saying that. Something's going to slip. Seafood Aquatic says, I meant to say grow densely. Low tech 75 with Phoenix Planet Plus. Everything grows all right. I can't get anything to grow really dense even when I trim and fertilize heavy. Whew. Have you tried any type of Sagittaria? Um, oh, look. Jimmy came to your stream, Bob. Yeah, I, I peer pressured him. Peer pressured, peer peer pressured him. Um, yeah, I'd be curious if you've tried uh, any Sagittaria, dwarf Sagittaria. It's not really a dwarf plant, but um, that's something that you can carpet pretty well with low light. So um, Joel says try Rickia. I would not try Rickia, <laughs> but yeah, it will take over your tank. Uh, but it's really hard to get rid of if you don't want it. So just keep that in mind. Why are there so many variations of Corridori, Corridora's Aeneas? Um, there just are. They're, there's, they're collected in many different areas. So we got different color forms. Dwarf, dwarf, dwarf. <laughs> dwarf chain sword would be another good one. Uh, and even a micro sword, but with both dwarf and micro under low light, you're probably looking at like a year and a half for it to to grow and uh, give you that nice bushy look that you're looking for uh, let's see Chris Jobs Aquarium tanks with the four dollar twenty cents how many Oscars can I put in a ten gallon sir you could put a lot of fry but you know after that two week mark you probably want to take them out um, and then move them into like a 20 and keep going Aqua Discovery says I was inspired to grill up a ribeye tonight because of you Whew. Jimmy and I are going in the mountains uh, this weekend so unless he bails on me so we'll have some more behind the scenes content for you guys my cousin bred glassfish in a pond in his yard the water was slow moving in the fall thousands not much happened during cold months I wonder John if he has like insanely hard water Bigfoot hunting. Yep. Yep. Free Joe Exotic. What's up, buddy? Poor Bob. 
don't know. I don't know. I don't know what my deal is. I'm having trouble speaking. Okay, I'm gonna try this. This is a, this is a long one. Let's see if I can get through it. I'm planning on buying rainbows for my three foot fifty gallon. Do you have a favorite rainbow fish for three fat? F nope, three feet format. I was looking at spotted uh, glopolesis or pygmy. So I've never heard of any of those. I haven't heard of spotted or pygmy. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about glossolepis. Um, the the common names can vary. I mean, there's like there's rainbow fish that even in the U.S. have like five different common names. Um, that's what I was gonna do actually for like a an April Fool's video. Do like a top five rainbow fish and have it all be the same rainbow fish, but just using five of its different common names. And then, yeah. Well, now I just gave away my next year April Fool's video, but whatever. You guys will forget by then. <laughs> Um, so I will say, I don't know of any pygmy glossolepis off the top of my head. Um, as far as three foot tanks, I would say dwarf neons are really cool. Kamakas are really cool. Goiter rivers are really cool. Um, obviously like one of the fun ones that's hard for some people is Pseudomagill fricatas, which are one of the most amazing fish ever, like as far as looks. Uh, they can be very picky though with water parameters and water quality so that's one thing to keep in mind with them how can i get my rear glass covered in green algae easy pugs tank um, you take either an extra light or your current light and you move it all the way to the back and you keep it on for like 12 to 14 hours a day and yeah you'll get it in no time i've done the algae wall on the back a few times um, it can be tricky to pull off because you don't want it to grow anywhere else obviously um, I will say that not only was it hard to pull off but it was hard to make it look good for long periods of time um, there's there's always like that sweet spot where it looks really good for like a week and then it either just becomes a place to like to just it, it becomes like a magnet for mulm um, it just gets out of control <laughs> so yeah it, it can be done like I said either get an extra light and keep it on the back or move your light all the way to the back all right what else we got going on do you think CPD clown killies emerald eye rasboras can all breed in the same tub together or they eat each other's young and too quick to breed for profit <sighs> yes yes I think they would prey upon each other like crazy like crazy especially like the egg scatterers um, I mean, it depends on if you have a large enough tub, certainly, certainly if you have a large enough tub. Uh, but if you're doing all of those in like, uh, you know, like the 50 gallon or even like the 70 gallon, maybe even like the 100 gallon, like it could be tough. It could be tough to pull that off. Um, if anything, I would pick either the Celestial Pearl Danios or the Emerald Eye Rasboras and just try one of those with the clown killies and but not both of them not both of them uh, question has any, anyone ever bred the flash pleco or the emperor pleco yes yes i'm assuming so the flash pleco for me i'm thinking the l204 which that one has been bred uh, and then the emperor the emperor pleco has been bred uh, i want to breed bristle nose plecos for profit as fun first breeding project what would you recommend Connor, if you could get your hands on either, hmm, well, I can't decide, but I would go with either Super Red or Longfin Green Dragons. Um, calico, Calicos are pretty sweet. You don't see those very often. Um, a lot of people like the Lemon Eye. I, the Lemon Eye one, I don't like the Lemon Eye Bristlenose Pleco. Personally, um, I don't like the Albino, the Albino Bristlenose Pleco either. Um, but if it was me and you want something that sells for a decent chunk of change, I would probably go super red. Uh, you can never go wrong with super red. <sighs> I am more than you know. I got two spawns of about 80 fry each of Corydora Aenis growing out in the breeder box. At what point should I transfer them to a grow out tank? Uh, well, if there's nothing else in the grow out tank, by all means, just throw them in there. By all means. But if, you know, well, if they're free swimming. If they've absorbed their egg, the egg sac, it's gone. They're free swimming. 
I'd move them over right away. I would not wait. Uh, last Raven says, last time I bought black worms, planaria showed up. I tried to breed the black worms, so it was a mess. I keep shrimp with quarries. Do you clean the worms at all or just dump the worms in all together? Um, I rinse out my black worms specifically just to get rid of any dead black worms or um, I guess if there was any contaminants, but it's not like when I rinse it, it's like maybe like 75% of the crap comes out and there's still like 25% of the crap left over. I mean, I could probably spend like an hour rinsing them to get it all. But to me, I just do a quick rinse and throw them all in. Um, yeah, I've got, Oh, already got that one. Hey, how can I stop algae growing on my lid underneath the light bar? I only have it on for seven hours a day. So my question, Joel, uh, so the question is how, a lot of us will get algae building up on the inside of the glass of your top. Uh, for me, normally when that happens is it's because water is splashing up on it. Um, I've never had it grow when water is not splashing up on it. So if you've got like splashing from like a hang on back or a power head or an air bubbler, um, some, something's gotta be splashing up on that sucker. So I would figure out what's splashing up if nothing's splashing up, I don't know what to tell you, honestly. Um, you might, like, clean it off and then rub it down with, like, an algicide or something. Um, but, yeah, other than that, in my experience, anytime there's algae on the inside underneath, it's because water is splashing up on it. If there's no, if there's no like, water, no moisture, algae is not going to grow. Uh, so he says, yes, L204, they were the same pleco. Yep, L204s. I've seen, uh, I've seen flash plecos bred. Yep. Diamond or Congo Tetra breeding for profit. So, JH Aquatics, I don't know. I know you breed some of those blue Tetras, and those are awesome, but would you say that it's for profit, or would you say just to help supplement the hobby? I don't know that, I don't know that you're going to get profit out of Tetras unless you're doing it on, like, a massive scale. But Congo Tetras are probably more popular than Diamond Tetras. So I I would lean towards Congo Tetras, but I don't know I don't know it's going to be like a profit thing. Although, if you got like a really nice line of Congo Tetras and you could sell them for like ten to twelve bucks each, you could probably get into some profit at that point. Uh, oddly, black worms won't eat dead ones. Um, Curtis St. Martin with the one dollar super chat. Thank you, Bob Kaler with the five dollar super chat. Boss, thank you, my friend. Uh, Kaler says, for what Congos you're going for now? Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, like, not even a few months ago, well, you know, beginning of the year, I could buy them for like a buck fifty. <laughs> not anymore. Uh, Caswell says, are Epistol McMaster I really good looking in person? The Google Pix makes them look like they are, looks like they are as nice um, the McMaster Eye are really nice looking. Really nice looking. Uh, Susan says, I got to get some work done. Have a great stream, Bob and family. Thank you, Susan, and thank you for becoming a member again. Always good to see you. Like I said, I hope you're doing well. Um, Dan's Fish is here. Says, Super Blue Karai Tetras are easy to breed and are a nice high price point and are in demand. If I were doing a Tetra for profit, it would be those. The Blue Karai. At the risk of looking stupid, I'm going to ask, are those the blue emperor tetras? I don't know. That's what's coming to mind, the blue emperor tetra. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, if you had to recommend a size tank to grow angelfish up to a sellable size, what would you recommend? Uh, probably like 29-gallon tanks. If you, don't want to, if you don't want to do the extra space, you could do it in a 20, but I would go 29-gallon. Uh, yes, they are the blue. Yep. Uh, Emperor Tetras always sell. <laughs> I, I feel like it doesn't even matter which ones they are. Uh, they always, always sell. Yeah. I used to have a giant school of, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I think it was the blue ones, but that was years ago. Um, my friend used to breed L204. Oxygen, circulation, good food, water changes, and, of course, mature fish. Yeah, I'm sorry. Was there a question on how to breed them? I thought, I thought 
the question was have they been bred uh, but yeah that is pretty much the recipe for success for any pleco oxygen circulation good food and water changes and of course mature fish that that pretty much sums it up to a t josh says topic change do you like fly river turtles i like all turtles all turtles i have recently went from owning one turtle to eight turtles i now have eight turtles it's crazy it's crazy i don't even know how it happened i mean i know how it happened it all it all just like swooped in all at once <laughs> and i ended now i have eight turtles one to eight one to eight has anyone heard of fine line pleco hmm fine line pleco i can say i don't think i have and apparently google hasn't either l134 hmm that's not it yeah i got i got nothing um fine line pleco see this so one site is saying that the fine line pleco is leopard frog plecos and then another site is saying that the fine line pleco is the gibbiceps which is i believe the cell fin so yeah i don't know i've never heard of it though i've never heard of it uh, aqua discovery says did you get your three striped mud turtles no i still want them though now i definitely don't have a place for them though i got six mini must turtles and jimmy's mata mata turtle uh temporarily temporarily so yeah and that all happened in like the same week too it's like here's six mini musk turtles and then maybe it was like the next week was like here's a mata mata turtle uh what size tank do you usually need for most turtles so bigger the better always when it comes to turtles um man people buy like red ear sliders and put them in like 40 gallon tanks no you're gonna be doing water changes like every single day so it really depends on the turtle right like a mini musk turtle not gonna need something like a red ear slider or like a mata mata turtle that's gonna get a foot and a half you know a mata mata turtle is gonna get like this big and the fun thing about the mata mata turtle is that they strike um they strike at everything like it striked at me a few times um it striked at shrimp that i put in there and then spit it back out um but it's funny because when it strikes you, like it doesn't hurt at all because they don't have teeth. So it's just like a, I don't know. It's like being bit by a couple of sponges. It's a really weird feeling. I don't know, hard to explain. But I don't, I don't know that I would keep like an adult turtle. Man, even like a mini musk turtle. I, I don't see keeping that in anything under like a four foot tank. Yeah. Now, a fly river turtle is going to get massive. That needs, like, its own pool. So, uh, Steamfot Aquatic, so I should just get a swimming pool so I can have a turtle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the nice thing, if like, if you got, like, an above-ground swimming pool for a turtle, then you could do a couple of them. And they're like fish. <laughs> you don't want just one. And for the most part, a lot of them are social, so they, they like buddies. Must need 75 gallon or something, but FRT, yeah. So they're the, they're the mini must turtles. So adult size, you know, still pretty small. And, but just for me, it's about their behavior. And it, and this is for uh, reptiles. This is for fish, amphibians, anything. It's about their behavior. So yes, I can keep, you know, fish or reptiles in something smaller, but then, you know, they just get lethargic. They're not happy. They're not schooling around like this, the fish here. Um, so like you can keep rainbow fish in a 20 long, but once you see them in like a 55 gallon, like it's a night and day difference on their behavior. Don't fly river rivers. You usually need some way to get it out of the water. Camp Keenan had one. Um, yeah, I'm certainly not an expert on fly river turtles. I just know they get massive and that they're pretty much illegal in my state. So you need like permits and the licenses and all kinds of crap to get them here in Washington. So I've never, I've never even looked into it. What size tank should I breed bristlenose plecos in? And what should I have for my male to female ratio? So it's actually better 
to have like two males and one female than it is to have like two females and one male because the males that guard and fan the eggs so like never I wouldn't have more females than males so I would always do like a one to three or two to six or three to nine that kind of ratio um, but when you when you start getting up until like you have nine plecos then just get like six of each six females six males let them duke it out let them you know establish their territories let them breed uh, as far as what size tank it really comes down to like maintenance like you can breed adult bristle nose in a 10 gallon tank but do you want to do water changes every day probably not <laughs> so you take you know if you have a trio like i do trios that's how i always start uh one because it's just cheaper <laughs> so two males one female and then I had that, um, what did I have? I had my super reds uh, in a 20 gallon breeding. And I had two, two males, one female breeding in a 20 gallon. But even that was water changes like twice a week. So to me, like any Pleco, 40 gallons, 40 gallons. Just a 40 gallon breeder, perfect size for just about any Pleco colony. Whew. Curtis St. Martin, thank you for the $1 super chat. My bristlenose plecos just laid eggs for the first time. Had them since they were around an inch. That's pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Although once it starts, it never stops. So I hope you have a place to unload them. Um, see for aquatics, do you know if guppies are free from thiamines? I heard you can breed them for uh, food for garter snakes. Um, I don't. I'm not, I'm not sure on that one. L46 is an amazing looking fish, but the market is so saturated nowadays that I think buying them and attempt to breed is pointless because there are so many of them. So I will say, I will say that if you're breeding a fish, make sure that you're at least doing it for fun. Like, and I'm not, I'm not saying that this is you, but I, w I would never like think of a fish like how much money can I make from breeding this fish? Cause that mindset right there is most likely going to make you fail at breeding fish. Just when all you're thinking about is dollar signs, like, hmm, that's usually not the right way to go about it. So make sure you like the fish that you're breeding first and then worry about the breeding part. Like worry about the money aspect later. Unless it's something that, you know, you want to turn into like a full time business there. I mean, there are definitely some really, really good fish breeders out there making pretty well, I mean, it's all relative, but pretty decent money breeding plecos, rainbows, pistos, all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, but it takes a lot. I mean, you, you look at like the Greg Sages, they still have full-time jobs and they're making, you know, a pretty decent amount on the side. But I mean, how long do you have to be in the hobby before you get name recognition like Greg Sage? Like how long before you can actually start charging more for your fish just based on your name? That's going to take a long time. A really long time. Aqua Seeking, welcome to the Dream Team. <laughs> um, yeah, be sure to check out all the old videos. Uh, we do weekly members only videos now. Unfortunately, that's just the way YouTube wants it. So I'm for the longest time I've been pretty anti, you know, playing the game, doing what YouTube wants. But at some point, you just gotta you just gotta do what's best if you want to grow. And YouTube loves memberships right now, so, you know, I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> Patrick says, I found a place to get Bozmani Rainbow Fish with the Gary Lang strain. How many would you add to a 75 gallon? They are one inch at the moment. I mean, I would do like at least a dozen. At least a dozen. It depends on like the collection point because there's, uh, what is it? Lake Itinjo and Aves Creek are smaller so you could do more so yeah just keep that in mind find the find the collection point curtis schindler says best membership content out there and we've only just begun we've only just changed the membership program this month and it's just going to keep getting better I, I will say this um i was really anti-memberships for a long time because i never wanted wanted to alienate people so i never pushed it um, you know, I might talk about it when somebody became a member, um, but over the last month, it's such a, a really cool place to have fun 
making those members only videos because they're videos that one I can never post on you know just a regular video anyways because no one would ever watch them uh, because it's like behind the scenes stuff non fish related stuff and people in you know 45,000 people on my channel you know like a thousand people would watch it so I, just, I can't put that on there so it allows me to be myself it allows me to have some fun um, at, and at the same time not risk releasing videos like the Bigfoot video that got like a thousand views but that was like super fun to make so um, I definitely see the light when it comes to that membership section for me just because like I said it allows me to have fun and just do goofy stuff that just wouldn't work on a regular fish channel so yeah I don't know that's just my uh, my new outlook on that I guess so to all the subscribers you're only missing stuff that would never make it on the channel anyways and I know everybody says that and it's because it's the truth it's the truth uh, then I wonder what type of pleco if I have if nobody has heard of a fine line because that's what my shop is selling them as uh, yeah Australia yeah it's really one of those things like for some reason like Americans we love putting red in the name even when they're not redfish <laughs> Like, I always see, like, Europeans and other people making fun of us because, like, gosh, what is it? I can't remember the name of it, but there, it, this happens a lot in, like, African cichlids where they'll call it, like, red red something, and then it's actually, like, a yellow fish. Gosh, I wish I remember what fish that was. I remember when I first found it, like, five years ago, I was, like, raging big time. I was like, nothing about this fish is red, but it, there's red in the name. <sighs> Crazy Americans, I tell you. I wish there was a buy two get one free memberships lots of good content yeah that would be so cool like membership collabs um, I do like that they can finally like allowed me to sell like bulk like you can buy three or six months at a time but you know whatever I don't want to spend too much time talking about it I like I like <laughs> I like names of guppies from Asia that can be a little too much at times yeah I yeah I I kind of ranted about this a while ago as like shrimp, like red shrimp have like 10 different names, like super red, cherry, super cherry, dark cherry, dark red. It's like, they're all just red. They're just red cherry shrimp. You either have crappy quality cherry shrimp or you have really good quality cherry shrimp. There's not 12 different names. All right. So just price your shrimp at what quality they are. All right. Like if I was to sell my cherry shrimp right now, I would probably sell them for like maybe a dollar, maybe like 50, 75 cents a piece because they're just, they're not like super duper dark, mega awesome red like this hat, but they're still red. And some people have red, like the aquarium co-op hat here, name drop. Every time I say aquarium co-op, I make $50. So I got to say it a, a couple times. Um, so yeah, the people that have shrimp like this, this color you know maybe you could charge six bucks for it you know what but don't start making up your own names or like they're like the orange shrimp there's pumpkin shrimp there's like latte orange whatever it's just just call them orange shrimp people like get over it get over it they're orange shrimp that's it yellow shrimp <sighs> man same thing a hundred different names just for yellow shrimp Free Joe Exotic, and I'm kidding, guys. I'm not sponsored by Aquarium Co-op. They don't pay me for saying their name. It's just a joke. Calm down. Relax. Uh, free Joe Exotic with the $20 Petco Substrate Fund. So, for all the people who don't know, I do have a Petco story. Um, this was about a month ago. I bought a bunch of aragonite from Petco on the website. Five bags of 10 pounds aragonite right so i buy it i get you know i waited like i didn't even go pick it up the same day i went like a couple days later to go pick it up and they're like what are you talking about i'm like i'm here to pick up my order like what are you talking about you have no order i'm like here's the order right here they're like oh there is an order but there is no substrate like we don't know where it is i'm like what i'm like it says right here like i bought it it says it's ready to pick up what what are you doing where is it they didn't know how to return it because they didn't have it and it was just this whole big ordeal. And I was like, I'm not even going to stress about it right now. I don't care. I just want to get my, my dog treats and toys and get out of here. And we'll figure it out later. Like, they didn't even know what to do. They were like, here's the 800 number. Call customer service. Like, that was their solution. 
So I know that if you buy stuff on Petco and never pick it up, it eventually will time out. So a couple weeks later, I look at my order and it says that it was already picked up. I'm like, what? I never picked this stuff up. So I was actually in Petco last weekend and I was getting some, uh, uh, what is this stuff? That some brand of dog toy, you know, like the, the mega tough brand, whatever it is. I don't remember what it is. And I happened to, to walk over to the fish aisle and there's all these bags of aragonite. And I'm thinking, those are all mine. There was five of them. I'm like, those came in. Yeah, Kong, that's it. But I was like, they had them. They had Kong toys on sale for 50% off. So yeah, I went a little crazy. And uh, But anyways, so I'm like, there are my five bags. Clearly I bought them. They didn't have them in stock. So they shipped them to the store and there they are. And I'm like, hey, I grabbed them all. Took him to the front counter, paid for my Kongs. He started ringing me up. I was like, nope, no, no, no. I already paid for these. Here's my thing. I know it says I picked them up, but I never did. You can check with the manager back there. We had this big whole thing about it. And uh, long story short, I finally got my Aragonite. <laughs> it just took forever. It just took forever. But that's all right. That's retail. It's computer systems. It's just glitches. It happens. Uh, I was never angry with them. Uh, I just thought it was kind of funny. Like, hey. There's my rag. I almost didn't check. Like I was in line with my Kong toys and I was like, you know what? While I'm waiting, I'm just going to go look over there. And I just went and looked and there they were. Uh, Crush. I don't like, I actually like Aragonite better than Crush Coral. So yeah, I, they do, they do the same thing, but Aragonite is like consistent. Whereas Crush Coral is like one piece is this big and then the next piece is this big. And then there's like a shell that's this big. And then there's like a broken shell that's this big. I, I don't like that. I like the consistency of aragonite. <sighs> Difference between aragonite and crushed coral does, like I said, it does the exact same thing. I'm sure there's some like technical difference, but it does the same thing. Negative uh, 500 for Bob's sponsorship fund for a crushed coral hating. Yeah, it's just if they could like make it consistent, consistent. Just need to be consistent. All right, I need it. I need it to look good, and I need black aragonite, black aragonite, not white. White substrate never looks good, ever. Just saying. Uh, do I use Wonder shells? If they weren't so expensive, I would. Um, I would put them in all all of my uh, tanks that have snails. I would put them in all of my tanks that have shrimp. But when I have as many tanks as I have that have snails and shrimp in them. I just, the cost gets, I, I know they're only like, what, four or five bucks each or whatever. But again, times that by 30, like every, they just, it takes what, like two, three weeks for them to, to dissolve. So I'm spending that money every couple weeks, twice a month. Adds up quick. What's my favorite snail? Malaysian trumpet snails, by far, by far. Not even, there's not even a close second. It's Malaysian trumpet snails. Aragonite, tor I would not use crushed coral or aragonite for Corydoras. I know the people have. I know they've been successful. I would never do it. Michael Wall, I'm right there with you, buddy. JJ Aquatic says, Bob, what would you stock in a 50-gallon low boy? So I have done a Pleco tank. Before that, it was a multi-tank, so shell dwellers. Right now, it is a turtle tank. Hmm, you guys have not seen that. That'll be coming in a fish room tour video that I think is maybe three weeks scheduled out. I don't know. I have like the next three months of videos planned. It's crazy. Uh, but you will be seeing them soon. A lot of people use the low boy tanks for shrimp tanks. Um, I didn't. I will say out of all of them, the favorite is the turtles right i mean it's a paludarium now it's planted it looks awesome there's a waterfall uh, and now there's turtles swimming around in there it looks absolutely amazing outside of turtles all right we're getting back to fish the favorites the favorite fish i ever kept in there was the multis um and that was when it was like the centerpiece of my fish room so it was like right in the middle you could walk around it you could see every single side and you could look down in it and it was just awesome by far the best uh fish wise so I would probably, if I do it again, I would do multis. Um, actually, I don't like, I don't like it as a planet tank because it's only ten inches tall, and I like I like really deep substrate. So like three inches, 
that gives me seven inches to work with. I can't really do stem plants. I'd have to do like some sort of micro chainsaw, dwarf sag, something that's just stays small. And uh, yeah, there's just not enough. There's not enough room for plants in there, in my opinion. Uh, Fish Room Fever with the five dollar super chat says, "Thanks for getting Dean to toss the specimen containers on camera. It's sold. Thank you again, Candy, for your unending work." Whew. Represent J H Shelley's. Yep, another vote for Shelley's. Uh, Mary Page Flynn says, "Wonderful stream. Just wanted to say hello to everyone. Well, thanks for stopping by. Low boy Dutchscape. Yeah." I get 20 different types of uh, stem plants. Um, I will say, if you got something like, uh, like maybe some like Lagwidia species, like Cuba, that have like the thicker stems and can grow up and out of the water, that would look pretty cool. And you know, it's something I'm doing right now, so I can I can actually say that it looks pretty cool. Um, this 50 gallon low boy paludarium that I built is the my favorite tank that I've built in a long time. And I'm really excited for you guys to see it whenever that fish room tour video comes out. Low boy Hillstream Loach Tank. <sighs> Hillstream, yes. Random like other loaches. I don't think so. Um and it's because I see like loaches, like even rosy loach, which is like, you know, that's a nano fish. Seeing rosy loaches in a 125 gallon tank just going up and down up it's really cool and uh i'm sure they would look cool in like a low boy but they love like swimming up and down like non-stop that's what they do up and down up and down and sometimes they just like surf in the middle of the water column and uh i can't imagine losing that look with like eight inches of water uh the paludarium is the best idea for the 50 gallon low boy waterfall and all yes i agree i agree the problem is humidity but if you you know have ways to combat the humidity no problem at all like i got a dehumidifier not that big a deal uh, i can hook you up with multis brevis or brichardi i don't know that i want to get back into multis um if i did another shell dweller i'd want to do something i haven't done so i've done pearly and gold ocelotus um, i've done similis and multis and uh yeah i think i'd want to do something new something new bob kaler is laughing at me the lol ten dollar super chat thank you bob kaler i appreciate it uh did you and dean had fun raiding the co-op so let's see the day started out at noon with dean Corey, randy and i um randy hung out for about four hours uh he left after we got lunch and then it was just dean Corey, and i and uh yeah dean is super fun to hang out with because he can make Corey do things that otherwise he would never do or allow people to do <laughs> so i don't know what kind of power he holds over Corey, but it's so fun hanging out with him because Corey would be like mm, i don't know about that and dean will be like no 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 it'll be fine it'll be fine it's it's fine we can do it <laughs> it's just so funny it's so much fun um and then just to be surrounded by like that level of fish nerds i mean the owner of aquarium co-op master breeder dean the i don't even know what his title is but what is he is he like the ceo or something of aquarium co-op i don't know but he's like second in command third in command i don't even know but you have all these amazing fish people and we didn't get done till midnight so 12 hours of just hanging out goofing around filming videos and uh there'll be some some of the outtakes where we'll be in this week's members only video and uh i just wish that there was someone there to film like the entire thing because all kinds of goofy stuff happened <sighs> hey curtis i sent you a messenger on facebook by the way i have hurricane laura coming my way what's your advice on how to keep your tanks going during a powder powder power outage backup batteries um if you don't want to you know spend the money on a generator um the little battery packs like that you recharge your cell phone with um work great for sponge filters you get the like the usb air pump put a sponge filter in there cover your tank so it stays warm like blankets towels whatever you got to do 
you know, take the comforter off your bed, whatever it takes. And uh, this is why Randy is the director of operations. There you go. The D O O. So yeah, this is why sponge filters are so important because of situations exactly like this. Like you can't take a hang on back, a fluval, a sump pump, a fluval. I, I can't, I, I'm thinking canister filter, but I said fluval because I watched that really stupid fluval video and their canister filters. Bang, bang, bang. Um, you can't just hook up a battery pack to that. I mean, you can, you can get like the, I've done, I've shown it on my channel. You can get the, like the same battery pack ups that you get for computers. But one, one of those little solar powered battery backups that you charge your cell phones will power those little USB air pumps for, so I keep one on the pond and it's never turned off and it's not always sunny here. It's not sunny right now. It's warm, but it's not sunny. And like two days without any sun, it's still pumping that sponge filter out of my pond. So sponge filters are insanely important. I can't recommend them enough. Ginger Gray says, Aquarium Co-op, so happy to see Jimmy and Robert unboxing again. I know I want to go down there. You guys want to see me doing an Aquarium Co-op unboxing? I kind of want to go down there. But I kind of want to do something different. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if I could pull this off. But I want to do an unboxing of fish that I order. So I want to do the order for the week and order whatever I want and unbox them. I don't think you would let me do that because I would order like the rarest of the rarest stuff and I wouldn't be ordering like the neon tetras. <laughs> I'd be like, Ooh, look at this. I've never seen this before. Ooh, I've never seen this before. Let's get a hundred of those and 50 of those and 20 of those. But I think it would be an, an, an interesting spin on an unboxing video. Not only let me unbox it, but let me do the purchase as well. So, you know, everyone need a peer pressure Corey on that one. Although, I won't peer pressure too hard because that's affecting his business. So if I bring all these fish in that don't sell. <laughs> uh, Sneapot Aquatics, can I put crushed coral in with my GBRs and neons? Uh, I know they like soft water, but they're not going to breed in there anyways. I guess my question is, why would you want to do that? If they don't need it, um, why? Why? Sneapot Aquatics, maybe just a few boxes of the order. <laughs> yes, please, Corey. I mean, how fun would that be? Like, I mean, I've, I've done my own orders, but I don't, only, I don't have access to the stuff he has access to. I mean, my lists are very small compared to what he has access to. So, you know, I'm just saying, I think that'd be really fun. Candy already said no. Oh. Well, I'll just have to send a message to the DOO. <laughs> because I have cherries in there and I would appreciate it, right? Um... I guess my question is if everything is in there now living and thriving, are the cherries like reproducing? Um, are, are they dropping triplets? Um, I, I'm just really weary of changing water chemistry when fish are already used to that water chemistry. Right. And for no other reason than to just do it. Like would your shrimp appreciate, crushed coral yeah but are they already thriving in there if they're already thriving then I, I i think there's a lot of risk of just doing something just to do it now if it needs it you know if the if the the calcium is so low that the shrimps like they're like imploding in on themselves they're like their bodies absorbing their their uh their shell and you know starts getting into weird stuff like that then maybe then maybe if you're having like super wide you know swings because um you know your water is not hard you don't have uh what's the word i'm looking for here i don't know there's a specific word i'm looking for it'll probably come to me at like two in the morning but anyways i wouldn't just do something to do it if like i said if they're happy if everything in there is happy i would just leave it alone is the word boffenstein Hmm, did I just swear in a foreign language? I hope not. Um, okay, yeah, good point. The cherries are having babies and stuff. Just can't help. Yeah. Yeah. So I would not I wouldn't do anything. I would not. I would just leave her. Buffer, yes. 
Buffer the water. Buffer. Thank you. Buffer. Ah, buffer. Maybe you could pick the type of bettas they order. Um, I do want to go take a look at that betta wall. I actually haven't been. No, I have been to Aquarium Co-op since the betta wall. But I have, I've never filmed it. So I would like to go take a look at that and film that too. Boffenstein isn't too, uh, too far off from buffer. That's true. That's true. Sponge filters and Pandagaras don't mix well. What makes you say that? My Pandagaras, the only filter is sponge filter. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> like, why, why would Pandagaras not like sponge filters? Are they going, like, down the, the uplift tube? Is that what's going on? Any Pleco is going to do that. Or just put Cuddlebone in there for the shrimp. And, uh, yeah, Cuddlebone. Um, there's something else that I've used to. I'm just brain dead tonight. I don't know. Tonight's not any different than any other day. Well, red eye tetra breed in a 10 gallon. So you could probably get them to breed. They are a little bigger body tetra, uh, but there's probably like a sweet point where you can get them to breed in there. It might be hard though. 10 gallon, 10 gallons is pretty small for the red eye tetra. Uh, dude, I forgot about Cuddlebone. Good idea. Thank you, Chevy Fish. Yep. Tell Dean he needs to do a video on his feeding contraption. Lost four of them that got blown out the tube. Do you got like a like a supercharger or a turbo hooked up to your sponge filter? Like, how much air are you blowing through there that your fish are like shooting out the tubes? Like, what is going on over there in your aquarium, buddy? <laughs> Eggshell is good for calcium too. Yep. Uh, man. LRB Aquatics uses crushed up organic eggshells for his shrimp. Um, seashells, yeah, I use seashells a lot because I'm right by the sea and they're easy to collect. Easy, easy, easy. Uh, is this a crazy idea? A few of, few of each color shrimp, glass cherry, jade, yellow, blues, and one tank and see what happens. No. Um, as a matter of fact, LRB Aquatics does that currently. He calls them his rainbow mix. Um, there might be a point like 15 years down the road and that number could be five years. It could be 20 years. I don't know. At some point you may start getting their natural color, which is just brown. So keep that in mind. But other, you know, if you're getting like good quality shrimp, they should keep their colors for a long, long time. Lots of generations. Uno mas, uno mas. Quite the visual there, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, have you used a mortar and pestle to crush eggshells to have a calcium powder for your tanks? Um, I don't think I'd want a powder. Uh, uh, again, for me, it's aragonite all the way. All the way. Easy. I don't know. That's just, it's good for plants. It's good for minerals. I don't, I don't really have a need to do any of the other stuff. I don't need to get that crazy just for calcium. Uh, thank you for the response to the red eye tetra. I was wondering about due to their size and their behavior. Yeah, so I kept the, I kept full grown adults in a ten gallon tank because I was selling them. Um, aquarium co op uses the three seashells. Well, fill us in on how that works because I still don't know how that works. And I well, I was gonna say something I shouldn't, but yeah, I, I don't know how that I don't know how that works. Fill us in. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, I kept the the re tetra, the red eye tetra, in a in a ten gallon tank, and I don't know that I could get them to breed in there. I'm sure someone could, but I couldn't. Fisher and Reaver says I only run one co op sponge on my co op linear pump, sending fish to the moon. I guess that's it. I mean, that's that's the way to do it. <laughs> that's overkill for air pressure on one sponge filter. Yes, that was uh, I think a little sarcasm there. A little sarcasm. <sighs> what tetras could you breed in a 10 gallon tank ember ember tetras would be the way to go like i think more people i wish i wish there would be someone this is what we need to have happen we need someone to take control of the ember tetra situation because it's really getting hard to find a good ember tetra there's only one place i know of and i'm not going to say that place is because I don't like that place, so I'm not going to promote him. But there's only one place I know to get, like, good quali quality Ember Tetras. 
And I think somebody needs to take take those and start just breeding the crap out of them. And maybe I will. Maybe that's what I do. Maybe that's my next project. I don't know. White, cow, white clouds could breed in a 10-gallon. Yeah, it, it'd be rough, but yeah. Yep. I have a bio cube with a small patch of black hair algae on a rock. Is it harmful to quarries to shuffle through it? Nope. Absolutely not. Aquasecan. I like that name. Aquasecan. There's probably like all kinds of like biofilm, um, you know, little, little tiny crustaceans, who knows, living in that blackbeard algae. And that's probably what they're doing is picking through there. Um, you can see that kind of behavior in plecos too, another, which is a catfish also, obviously. Um, but a lot of times if you see like meat eating plecos, um, like most of the hype cistrus, they're going to be meat eaters. And people will be like, they're algae eaters. Look, these he, they're on the algae. They're, and it's like, he's not eating the algae. Technically, he's probably eating some of it. But he's so starved that he's searching through that algae and picking out all those little microorganisms just to try to get any morsel of food. So if you have meat-eating plecos eating your algae, you need to feed them more. So, yeah, if you if you see your hypencistrus or any, uh, any of them, going for algae you need to drop some more wafers in there there's my the more you know wild siren welcome to the dream team i don't know how many members we've got this live stream but that's a pretty good amount one two three four five six seven that's really good. That is really good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hillstream Loach Owners Facebook group is really nice. That's very specific. <laughs> That's a very specific group. Ember Tetras are also shrimp safe. They're one of my favorite Tetras. And it's a shame when I go into places and I see orange Ember Tetras. I've tried to bring them in a few times myself and I ended up selling them off way cheaper than most ember tetras because they're they were orange they were ember bob's plant budget negative two hundred dollars i saw glow bettas at pet smart last weekend felt even worse than i normally do yep uh, i saw them for the first time in my pet co last weekend and i feel like they all they all they have like that end cap that's all bettas and like little itty bitty i mean it's like the size of this right like this and then like they had like the glow tetras in like places in like containers that were like half the size of the other containers. And I don't know what the reasoning for that is, but man, is that frustrating. It is so frustrating. Grumpy Mike's Fish says only 43 more to 300 likes. Only 43 more likes. That's all we need. That's it. There's 360 people here, which is amazing. Did we, I wonder if we hit 400. 400 is the new goal. I don't know if we hit it, though, because I haven't been paying attention. Uh, off switch is what plecos are after. I can never pronounce that. Uh, lots of fish and crustaceans need it. It's one reason why people lose fish in perfectly clean tank, even though it's cycled. This is why I'm a huge proponent of algae. Every tank should have algae. Every tank. 388. Whew, so close. What about chili rasboras? Like a fish, like on a fish list. Chili rasboras were somewhat common um, before everything closed down, and I haven't seen them on any of my list recently. But again, my list, I, I don't have access to very much. I have, I think, I have, I only have three wholesalers that I can go through, so I really don't have a lot. I wonder if they could or would make glow crickets, and if reptiles would see them easier. Um, almost 398. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> uh, I don't oof, glow crickets. I don't think so. Uh, Lumpy Dog says, anybody talking about the Petco tank deals online? Much cheaper than a dollar per gallon? I don't know anything about that. How how is that? I'm gonna go to their website right now. Curtis St. Martin dropping the one dollar super chat. Thank you, my friend. Um, who forgot to hit the like button? I I think. It sounds like we're pretty close to a lot of likes, so. Petco doesn't even load for me. Oh, there it goes. I need more information, Lumpy Dog. More information. Did Aquarium Co-op do a blog article or video on breeding tetras? 
Um, I haven't seen one. I haven't seen one. Guppy Fisher says, I'm getting a bunch of Lemia species to breed, so there's more for the hobby. Lemias, Lemia species, very underrepresented in the hobby. So I thumbs up that. My tanks have Steam Flight Aquatics algae goals. I'm telling you, algae fixes everything. Everything. If you have a power outage, algae, uh, algae is there to help you. If you have a spike in ammonia, algae is there to help you. Algae fixes everything. Uh, Petco link to my local store. Let's open this up. 29 gallon. Holy smokes for $18. Wait. I saw the Petco deals. Maybe extra tanks from the dollar per gallon sale. About $16 for 20 long. Not, avail not available there. All right. 29 gallon. Buying it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Hold on. This is like right now, gotta take care of this before someone else sees it. What is this tank? 10 gallon tanks for six dollars? What? Uh, 40 gallon tank is still 85 dollars. That's not a good deal. Uh, what else? Holy smokes. Uh, 40 breeder link. Oh, it is there. $35. Not available at any store. Good. Keep dropping these links, man. Keep dropping them. And nobody better step foot in my territory. If you guys are around me, you better stay out. You better stay out. This is my territory. My territory. Uh, what, what else? I can't, like... It's still showing regular price for me, but when I click on your link, it's showing. I paid thirty-six dollars for my forty breeder. Yeah, this is insane. Um, come on, we need. A, I need a link for twenty gallons. Twenty gallon. Twenty gallon tall. That's what I need. Twenty gallon talls. Twenty gallon tall. Let's do it. Twenty gallon. Twenty gallon. Give me a link. Give me a link. I need a link. Uh, let me see if I can just find it. 55 link. Oh, don't tell me the 55s are on sale. $52. <whistles> Not available, of course. I need that 20 gallon link though, my friend. 20 gallon long. Um, why? Where is my tall? Where is my tall? I know. <laughs> I need my fish tanks. <laughs> Here we go. 20 gallon. $12 for the 20 gallon. Holy smokes. And there's none anywhere. $12. What? What? What is going on? Uh, Man, I want that 40 gallon. None anywhere. I don't see 20. Uh, yeah, I got the 20 standard. I found it, but none. None available. <sighs> Man, unbelievable. Still 29 available at my store. Yeah, that's the only one I found. Like the one size I don't need, but it's $18. So how can I not buy it? 40 gallon by my pet is on sale for $35. Yes. Oh, I don't know my password. Come on. Come on. Sorry, guys. This is like time sensitive because I know there's people that live by me. They're trying to steal my tanks right now. So. Uh, yep. $18. Whew. All right. I mean, the last thing I want right now is 10 gallon tanks, but at $6 each, like, how can I say no? Man, what a bummer. 
Oh, I'm looking. I'm looking at every store around me. Uh, oh, what is this? I literally bought the, the last 29-gallon tank. Uh, let's go here. Hmm. Uh, Corey bought them all already. He should have. He should have. Man, that's crazy. I don't need 29 gallon tanks at all, though. Your store has 20 gallon talls. Ah, oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the 20 gallon tall and see, like, how far <laughs> Lumpy Dog. Sorry to hijack the stream. I don't think anyone is complaining right now. I'm pretty sure everyone just left the stream to go to Petco's website. Uh. 20 gallon long. Nope. Okay, what about the 40 breeder? Ugh, I gotta go to... Oh, man, I gotta go far for that one. That's too far. I'm not going that far. <sighs> I know. I can't even... I would, like, show you guys the screen, but it has, like, all my personal information and where I live and... I don't need any weirdos finding that out. Uh, let's see. How far? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'll stop this in a second. Linwood again for this. Well, Linwood. Maybe I do got to go there. Um. Let's see. Get rid of that. Do that. And how do I update? Okay. Hmm. All right. All right. I'm done. I'm done. One more thing real quick, and then I swear I'm done. Okay, I'm done. Now I'm done. I promise. Okay. 75 gallons for $87. Yes, that is insane. Oh my gosh, there is a 75 gallon at my store. Um, uh, okay. Okay, I, I lied. I got to look at this real quick. Because I do know that there is a 75 gallon at my store. Uh, okay, hold on. Sorry, again, I'm sorry. Let's see if I, th these prices are insane. They are absolutely insane. And I just happen to not have... We're just in a quick recess, and I promise we'll end the stream strong. I promise. Okay, here we go. Come on. Come on. I hate when it's loading. I feel like someone's stealing my stuff from out from under me while it's loading. Yeah, I got the meat sweats. <laughs> you have no idea. Come on, it's loading. Order confirmation. 75 gallon tank for 80 some dollars. I wonder if they have another one. I only put one in the cart. Uh, let's try it again. I, should. I know there was one sitting there. That's why I knew they had one. Not available. Change store. Do I want another one? Um, yes. Going for number two. All right. All right, I'm done. 
I'm done. I just spent like three hundred dollars on fish tanks. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Do it for Dale. <laughs> Who's Dale? Who is Dale? Um. Okay. Holy smokes, Lumpy Dog, you just cost me three hundred dollars. You son of a biscuit. Bob, build another paludarium with the Petco tank. Um, hold on. Whew. Lumpy Dog wins the trophy for tonight. That is crazy. Mr. Ed says, I got 255s, 240s, 510s, 55 gallon on sale for $52. The Stratum was on sale when I was there, but it wasn't cheap. How much is it now? All right, everybody, don't exit the live stream. Open another tab. Head on over there, and let's see what else is cheap. Um, Fluval is like 20% off. Fluval Stratum. Yeah. Um, I did look at Eco Complete. That's not on sale. That's the regular $23. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'll buy some 10 gallons. I, I need to get off this website. All right, I'm done. Just picked up three more 10 gallons for $22. Man. And the thing is, is like we're building a fish room right now at, at Denny's, and she's AFK. I better call her. Why does my phone say it's six twelve? It's six forty two. I need to know. Like, do we actually need tanks? Do we not need tanks? Like, uh, you know, what's the deal? Um. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Live on air. Okay, here we go. Don't forget to buy the cases of ramen because you can't afford food. Yeah. This is way more important than food. Way more. You need to answer. Hmm gonna lose out uh, Jeffrey says I was able to score six tens 140 breeder and 120 tall I really need 20 talls that's what I need Ugh, no answer some business partner Jeez. all right I'm getting off this website because it's getting dangerous that's too much money all right, I might just start buy, buy a 40. $36, buy a 40. Oh, no, don't call me back on here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't call me on Facebook. Um, Bob's hour of bragging about all my tanks. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, uh, by the way, we're on the live stream right now, so don't swear. But hi guys. But uh, Petco is having it, their tanks are insanely cheap right now, cheaper than a dollar a gallon. Uh, super cheaper than a dollar per gallon. Ten gallon tanks are. Are we going after the live stream? Yeah, ten gallon tanks are ten dollars. No, 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 no. Ten gallon tanks are six dollars. Okay, I was gonna say, wait a second, that's a dollar. <laughs> yes, it's all um, gone. I've already okay, bought call me when you're off. We're I've already do a special trip. I've already bought all the seventy fives. I've bought some twenty nines. So the pretty much the only thing I left is 
It's, it's 10 guns. 40 breeders, and I think I need more 20s. So. What about 20 long? 29? No, 20 long. 20 long, yes. I need 20 long. Okay. Okay, okay. I'll call you after. Okay. All okay. right. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Fish emergencies, man. Fish emergencies. All right. Lumpy dog. It's all your fault, buddy. It's all your fault. Okay, so what have I missed? What's been going on? Pets Plus even has the 55 gallon on sale. I was informed. All right, so I don't have a Pet Supplies Plus, but if you do, you should check it out. Uh, what else do we got here? Well, he gets this like this at a barbecue restaurant too. Yeah, I go crazy, crazy. Oh man. Uh, what do you think of the shark filter? Freshwater dude, I have never used it. So I actually don't know anything about it other than what I've seen on his videos. That's all I know. Um, me personally, I don't have a problem with sponge filters. So, I mean, I don't know. So, I know so little about that. I don't know if it's designed to like replace sponge filters. Is it like designed to work with it? Is it like I don't know I just don't know like do you go from a sponge filter to that do you do it in a, to addition to that I don't know maybe I'll buy one someday and try it out uh, but sponge filters are just so easy that but I get it not everyone likes to look at sponge filters they don't it doesn't bother me I just cover them up with plants so <laughs> whatever four more likes that's all we need four more likes four more likes Filters are only about $10 off, so nothing else. Um, yeah, $35 for 40 breeders. And, and let me look, let me look. So when you buy a tank at the dollar per gallon sale, say a 40 gallon breeder that's $100 is on sale for $50. You pay tax on the $100, right? These, I just paid tax on the sale price. Yep, I didn't pay any extra tax at all. So there you go. Although I do gotta look at 20 gallon long. 20 gallon. $16. Hmm. Doesn't let me buy any. It says low inventory, but it won't let me buy them. They probably just had like everyone like there's probably like four and they just sold like eight. This is going to be a real problem. Um, hmm. Anyways. So when does Petco realize the huge mistake they just made? Don't forget the $5 pet rewards you earn for every $100 you spend. Yep. I was at Petco yesterday, I believe, and I got my $5. And I just earned 15 more dollars. I have to go pretty far at this point, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I have to go pretty dang far at this point. I really want these 40 breeders, but they're pretty far and they only have one. So I'm not gonna go down there and risk it for that. Um, that's not very patriotic, Bob, to not pay that tax. I did pay tax. I paid tax on the sale price, which is the way it should be. Mm-hmm. Wow, great tank prices. Life with pets. Yep. Got to spend money to make fish. Yep. Yep. Uh, are they changing their tank suppliers? Oh, I hope not. If they're going back to Tetra, then it better be like 50 cents a gallon sales, not a dollar fifty, because those Tetra tanks were the worst, the absolute worst. Aquarium Co-op, the Scarlet Temple I got from y'all looks amazing in person. Yep, if you watch that uh, $60,000 plant order, you can see like they actually do right when it comes to plants. There's so many people that just flip plants. It's so frustrating. So frustrating. Renee says, I wish I had a Petco and PetSmart in our town. Yeah, has anyone checked PetSmart? Like, now I got to check PetSmart. <laughs> Forty gallon breeder. No, just forty gallon. 
Oh man, these aquariums just came in from Wuhan. Hey, 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 don't get me demonetized now. Don't get me demonetized. None of that. None of that. I see nothing on sale at PetSmart, which has kind of been the norm for like the last year. I checked PetSmart, no sales, no sales. Uh, gotta go unpack, have a good night everyone. Thank you. Message retracted, she does not want everyone to have a great night. <laughs> I got lucky my tanks are Aquion. Yeah, when I, uh, so it was, it was Aquion and they switched to Tetra and so many people complained. I think they only did Tetra for like two years and then went back to Aquion. And honestly, the, even the Aquions lately have been, tr have been starting to slip on the quality control. Like way too much, um, way too much silicone. Uh, just like I even had one where it had silicone in like the middle of the glass, like just giant blobs of silicone in the middle of the glass. Like really, people, pay attention. Uh, Houston has a bunch in stock. Houston, Houston, you do not have a problem. You got tanks. Uh, can you give a shout out to my wife Yanni so that she thinks this live stream is cool? There you go. <laughs> Uh, same company owns Tetra, Petco, and Aquion. Um, well, that, I don't know, has it always been that way? I thought Tetra and Aquion, because there's only like two companies, right? Like once you get like all the way to the top, there's only like two companies. <sighs> I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So Corey will be out of plants soon, and Dan's Fish will be out of fish thanks to this sale. Whew. Yep. Yep, it's a good time to be in the retail business. I can vouch for way too much silicone. Yeah, it's like the problem with Tetra is like none of the panes of glass ever met, ever like lined up, and they'd be like a quarter of an inch off. It was crazy, crazy. Now the problem with Aquion is apparently they have too much silicone, and they're just standing back and pumping it out like crazy. Um, sorry, Bob, for what? Could could probably Alibaba some tanks if you meet the minimum order. Uh, it's not. Trust me, it's so expensive. I've already tried. <laughs> I've tried Alibaba for a lot of stuff, and you have to buy like cargo containers at a time full of stuff. Oh man, it's crazy. Uh, the last Aquaman tanks I got used silicone, like a little kid uses toothpaste all over the place. Yes, but I'll take that problem over. Not enough silicone and the panel's not lining up any day. Danny Dubs Life says, best 911 text I ever received. I was like, yeah, I did. I was like, 911, look at your phone now. Look at it, look at it. So Danny, the only Petco's that still have stuff in stock um, are in Linwood. And the local ones only have 10 gallons left. So I don't know if you, if you need 10 gallons. Um, so yeah. But any of the ones I bought, uh, you can have. I know of four glass aquarium companies, Perfecto, Aquium, Zoomed, and Marine Land, but it's, yeah, nothing's, nothing's in Everett. I checked Everett. I don't know if you're home now, you can check, but, uh, yeah, somebody tell Danikin he's driving all over the country. He can like clear out every single Petco. <laughs> it's crazy. Look up Central Garden and pet they own aquion among other brands yeah i think i think once you get all the way to the top there's only like two different companies but and then all those companies own like all the weird companies like tetra and marine land and i don't know fish tank barn says i did get a couple 20 highs coming thing still has 20 talls that's the that's the one i need is i'm replacing all my 10 gallon tanks with 20 gallon talls that's i need 20 talls Man, of course, those were the ones they were all sold out of. Good thing I'm working out of a Petco within four hours of me. I'd be out of money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my store at 26 miles in Utica, Utica, Utica has several. Austin. Austin, Massachusetts. Uh, we had to haul those two tanks back from PA to New York. Uh, I want to take a trip to Houston because this is a real good deal, but I'm broke. <laughs> so, yeah. Man. I still can't believe... Uh, Lumpy Dog, why wouldn't you message me that like six hours ago? I probably could have had all my tanks. 
Do you think Peko is going back to Tetra? I sure hope not. But apparently they're made by the same people. But there was, or at least owned by, I don't know that they're made by the same people, okay? But they're owned by the same company. But there was definitely a huge difference in quality. Like the 55 gallon Tetra dollar per gallon tank, you fill that with water and you can see the front panel like bow out. Screw that noise. I don't want any part of that. Fish Room Fever says, I don't even want to say how many tanks I bought. <sighs> I've always loved the idea of a wall of 33 longs. That is a really cool tank. I have one that I haven't used in years. Um, give us an over under. Yeah. Um, the 33 long, I do like. I do like that tank. Again, I still have the same issues of like the height, but it's 12 inches, which is a little better than 10 inches like the low boy. That sale has been going on for a while here. Hmm. There's no mention of the sale at Petco when I was there. Absolutely no mention of it. So I don't know if they're going back to Tetra. Um, man, I don't know. They've never done this after a dollar per gallon sale. Like even when they got rid of Tetra, they didn't do this. It could, it could be just some kind of error. Error like. Hey, it was supposed to be 25% off tanks and somebody accidentally clicked 75. I don't know. It's not the first time Petco's made a mistake like that. Even, um, so last summer, PetSmart did that with their uh, ZoomEd, I believe. Maybe it was Exoterra, but one of their, um, one of their terrariums the really big one, the 18 by 18 by 36, it's like $200. They had it mistagged online at $40. And like the reptile world went nutso. And I, I didn't get one in time, but man. And they when they figured it out, and like if you bought it online, they figured out the mistake before you went and picked it up, they wouldn't actually let you take the tank, which, whew, man, I, I would raise hell if they tried that on me, but... Yep. Anyways, cost of tanks over the cost of a U-Haul truck to pick them up for buying so many. <laughs> That's the over-under. <laughs> oh, man. Planted beta tank for my new 29. There you go. That's an excellent size. Excellent size. They just I, I really like the 29-gallon size. I have one now. It's called a 30-gallon, whatever the difference is. But um, I really like that size, but it doesn't really fit my... Um, my stands that I built since I built them for tens and twenties. So we'll see. I'm sure I can find something to do with it. I mean, for $18, how do you not buy it? I don't know that I'll go pick them up tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Actually, I would be smart to pick them up tonight. Uh, so someone doesn't steal them out from under me. Amber just caught wind of the sale. Trouble. Yeah. You're in trouble now. You're in trouble now. I've talked about it so much. I've drove myself crazy in everyone else. That's kind of the, the way the hobby is. Spectrum brands make Tetra and Marine Land an instant ocean. Mm. I don't know. 30 breeders are cool. Um, I think 30 breeders are cool just because they're pretty unique. You don't see a lot of them. Um, and definitely, definitely a pretty neat. Uh, enough that I now get access denied on the site. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. April Fools. Do they just figure it out and like refund everyone's orders? That would be so funny. Good thing I just bought a truck. Now I can haul all these tanks around. Oh, the 90 gallon. They did have 90 gallon tanks too. Do they still? Were those ever online? 90 gallon aquarium. Nope, I don't think those were online. <laughs> Fish Room Fever just got banned from Petco. Banned. 90 gallon. I can't find the 90 gallon on the website. Maybe that one's not on the website. Hmm. Anyways, that pretty much does it for us. We have hit the two hour mark. Who do we have here? Let's go take a scroll through. I want to thank everyone that came over from Aquarium Co op. That was pretty awesome. Uh, we had 
I don't think it was a record. I think I've had like almost 450, but we got to almost 400, so that's pretty amazing. Uh, I gotta thank thank Fish Tank Barn, Mr. Ed, Holly, Grumpy, Fish Room Fever, Irene, who Fish Tank Barn, Greg, uh, Rubenzi, Trey Rubenzi, I think I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, Seepel, Seepel, Susan, Seepel, Rose, Jobs Aquarium Tanks, Curtis, Kaler's Aquatics. Oh man. Uh, Curtis St. Martin, Aqua Seeking, Aqua Seeking, uh, Free Joe Exotic. With the, it says Petco Substrate Fund. Actually, Petco Fish Tank Fund. <laughs> and uh, Fish Room Fever with the $5 super chat. Bob Kaler, $10. Wild Siren, becoming a member. Curtis St. Martin. Excuse me. Thank you all. This was a really fun and a really successful stream. I'm going to say it. It was successful. Uh, um, anyways. So thanks to all of you for becoming a member and super chatting. Thanks to my uh, mods. Awesome. Thank you know, always appreciate the links and deleting people that shouldn't be here. And most importantly, thank you to all the subscribers. You are, you are the giant cog that runs this entire channel. And without the subscribers, none of you other people would be here <laughs> including me so thank you all we'll be back here next monday 5 p.m pacific like always hope you have a good week and uh members this week's video is gonna be pretty pretty funny so look forward to it should be wednesday or thursday i haven't decided what days i want to do them on but anyways have a good night everyone